Pictures of Hollis Woods, page 55, chapter 6, The Time with Josie. My head was a round burl of wood, the seagrass dried now, a swirl on top. Josie spent hours over it at the kitchen table, humming to herself, a tray of tiny knives spread out in front of her. It was Monday, early in December, almost dark in the late afternoon. No Chinese dinner tonight. I was making a dish Izzy had taught me. Special deluxe, she had said, and smiled at me. Chopped meat, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, and cheese spooned over hot rolls. Salad. Pound cake with confectioner sugar sifted over the top. It was going to be a special deluxe evening. Beatrice was leaving the next morning for New Mexico, where she'd paint the adobe houses and the desert. I'll come back when the mood strikes, she had said, or when my money runs out. We'll close up the movie until I get back. All week, I had a pain in my chest. I was waiting to see what the mustard woman would do. School was all right. I kept my head in the books, made A's on two tests, and had no friends. But if the mustard woman talked to Josie for more than five minutes, she'd know about Josie. Strange how much I wanted to stay. Maybe it was because Josie needed me. I'd never been needed before. Or wanted? Asked a voice in my head. The old man had wanted me, I told myself. So had Izzy. So had Stephen. Then why? Don't think about that. Think about Josie. A little forgetful, Beatrice had said. Maybe old age. But not always forgetful. There was the afternoon Josie had watched me sketch small pictures on my pad. I remember something. She tapped one red fingernail on her lower lip. There's paper in the attic. I haven't seen it for years. I think it belonged to my father. I climbed the stairs, then, bent like a pretzel, I scurried around the low attic, stepping over bags and bushel baskets, stopping to look at boxes of paper-thin Christmas ornaments and yellowed leather gloves, until I found what she told me about, huge pieces of paper, gray and dog-eared. I ran my hands over them, thinking about the day the old man gave me the drawing box. As I maneuvered my way back to the steps, Josie had called up, There's an easel, too! Beatrice came now, hurrying up the walk. Her hair had been done up in a high pink swirl at the hairdresser. Her nails matched, and so did her huge pink purse. We were ready for her with the pound cake on Josie's best plate and the dishes on the table. We ate watching the pale December sun drop behind the trees in the backyard. When Josie went inside for something, Beatrice leaned over. Take care of her, she whispered. I thought of yelling, of telling her about the mustard woman and the agency, but what if Josie came back? Beatrice saw me frown. Maybe I shouldn't go. Josie said, Josie said you wanted to do this all your life, but go, I said, wishing I could go too. I'd take that shoreline bus up through New York State. It would be early summer again, the first time I'd seen Stephen and the old man playing checkers in the diner. I'd start over. I would do everything different. Everything. But instead, I'd do it all right. I'd stay with Josie and I'll take care of her, I whispered. Somehow, I said in my head. Beatrice turned over one of my pictures. I'll leave my phone number, she said. I'll write it down. She patted my hand. I won't be there for the first two or three weeks. I'll be traveling around, but just, just in case. I watched her make careful, even numbers on the paper and turn it over as Josie came back into the kitchen, another one of my pictures in her hand. I didn't take any chances, though. Through the rest of the dinner, I said the phone number over in my head. I wanted to make sure I'd remember it. Page 59, sixth picture, driving the truck. I never showed this picture to anyone. The golden field, me with my head back laughing, my hands at the wheel of the truck. It took four or five pencils to do this. I started with summer green, iron gray, and beach sand. There was something, that was something that Saturday night. Izzy and the old man were going to the movies in town. It's a romance, the old man said, wagging his eyebrows at me. A waste of a good evening. You'll love it, John, Izzy said. There are snacks in the refrigerator and in the cabinet. Snacks all over the place. You won't starve. She leaned out the door. And there's a tin of that hard candy in my dresser. Stephen crossed his eyes. They're so sour they curl your tongue. Not mine. I'd been eating them all summer. I couldn't get enough of them. That's because, he began, I knew he was going to joke about my being sour. 
but the old man came out the door. I just saw that mess you left in the shed, he told Stephen. Straighten that place up. It's bad enough your room looks the way it does. What's this neatness kick? Did you notice how neat Holly's things are? Without thinking, I put my hand up. Don't, I began. But it came out as a breath. Neither one of them heard, or maybe they were just paying, they just weren't paying attention. Stephen unfolded himself from his chair so slowly it seemed as if he weren't moving. Hang in there, Holliswood, Stephen said as the old man stamped around the side of the house and started the car. We're going to be out of here in five minutes. Where? Already he was running around the side of the house to the shed. I sat there listening as he threw things around for a few minutes, and then he was back. I'm going to teach you how to drive. Good thing they took the car instead of the truck. He dangled the keys in front of my nose. Anyone who can keep her things disinfected can drive a truck. I don't think, I began. Scared? Never. All right, don't waste my valuable time arguing. In the back of the evergreens and the row of holly bushes was a flat field. The old man kept it mowed against snakes, rattlers that struck blind in the summer. Don't worry, Stephen said, sliding into the truck. No one's been bitten for about a hundred years. Pop worries about everything. Stephen drove as if he'd been doing it all his life. He grinned across at me in the suicide seat. Since I was about eight, he said, knowing what I was thinking. I'm going to take the truck up the mountain one day. He showed me the gears and the pedals, and then we switched seats. And so I drove in that field in the summer evening light, Stephen shouting directions as I lurched through the ruts, bucking and stalling, starting up again with gear grinding noises. Aha, Hollis Woods, he'd yell. There's hope for you. I knew it. I pressed my foot down on the gas pedal a little harder. Yahoo, I yelled. It's me driving a pickup truck. 